You are going to love this. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you 14 gardening trends for this year and the near future. So be sure to stick around for yourself. If this is your first time here, my name is Marlene. Welcome to my home and garden channel. So the first trend is basically called hortifuturism, where your gardening is tending toward the future and the color of choice is lime green. And you can see these beautiful limelight hydrangeas over here, how gorgeous they are. They're absolutely beautiful. And you can see that they have paired them here with some grasses. And I think it looks so, so wonderful. For a more tropical type plant, we have a, a califa right here. You can see it has that mottled lime green look, with dark, darker splashes on there as well. Bear in mind that this is a tropical plant though, so you want to grow it in warmer climates. I would say not where the overnight temperatures drop below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. It is just so, so beautiful. We saw this on our cruise to the Bahamas, and I think it makes a wonderful addition to tropical gardens. Now, if you're trying to bring that same lime green color inside your home, this is a beautiful Syngonium plant that I have here. And I actually have it in water right now. As you can see, there's being water propagated. I'm gonna put it in some soil, you know, shortly. But I just think it looks so, so beautiful to bring that futuristic color indoors. Another good example here would be like Philodendron. And this is actually the plant for 2024. It is so beautiful. And it is one of the easiest plants that you can grow. A more darker version is to the right of it, as you can see there. A good plant for outdoors would be this right here. This is called sweet potato vine. You can see because they have the darker colors too, but this one right here is more lime green color. It's a beautiful trailing plant. So if you're doing container gardens and you want like a more three dimensional, you know, look to it, this is perfect. And it grows, it's an annual, but it fills out very nicely over the season. And then we also have here my creeping jenny in this beautiful arrangement right here and i did a previous video showing you how to grow caladiums and i'll link some of my previous videos below that tie to this particular video here the next one will be pollinator gardens and what's really happening is that you know everything is more eco-friendly so we're trying to bring more pollinators in the garden because you know these insects they're very important if we don't have them you know butterflies birds and bees then of course you know our plants you know the things that we're trying to grow for food are not going to get pollinated very easily it will still happen but it's a little bit harder when you don't have you know like these animals helping us out and they tend to you know more be more widespread than trying to say you know self-pollinating because you'll have them going from different areas to get like nice varieties and more resistant plants so that's very very helpful i just thought this butterfly was so beautiful and i captured it when we were going heading out for a cruise so i thought that's really a nice way to head out and of course, birds too are very important. So you'll see a lot of like bird bats and bird feeders. And you can see this little, a blue jay right here is having a wonderful time at the feeder. And you know, they're good for pollinating, but they're also good for, you know, dispersing seeds. And that's how your volunteer plants come about quite often because they drop the seeds in different places. The next thing would be to have native plants. So like this coneflower plant right here, it is so beautiful. I absolutely love it. I just love when it comes back. And this is actually a perennial too. It will die down in the winter and then in the spring it comes right back up and you have beautiful flowers all summer leading right into fall. And of course you can always mix it in with other types of plants like these little begonias that are coming up there. Myrtle is also another, another good one too. You know, very good native plant. You'll see it in most places, very popular. You have so many different colors. And I'll be doing a future video on this, so make sure that you stay tuned to see what I'm going to be doing on these wonderful myrtle plants. The next thing is less lawn and more ground cover. This right here is some beautiful creeping phlox that I've had in my garden for many years. I took some of it out last season, but nevertheless, it's very, very beautiful. And, you know, you use less water when you have these type of ground covers, whether they give you flowers or not. They're absolutely beautiful, very versatile and great for rock type gardens as well. There's also like creeping thyme, ajuga and quite a few others. This is another one over here, a little bit higher off, but you can also use these like, you know, along walkways, you know, hedgings and different ways you can use this. This is actually called Liriope. And you can see it has beautiful, beautiful purple flowers. And these flowers usually come out in about, say, the middle of the summer, usually about July or so. But the leaves are so beautiful. You know, it doesn't even matter if it's not flowering. It's still so wonderful when you see these taking up all of those spaces. 
and you know may get a few weeds here or there but that's a part of the whole process you can just pull those out if you ever see them i just think it's so beautiful and we did put the rocks down to give it even a more natural look so you can see how wonderful it looks right there i absolutely love it it's very versatile and a perennial too the next thing is as far as you know controlling pests go there is more of a look now towards handling them with other animals instead of going in and putting you know like harmful um pesticides that kill everything out or just you know not as clean as people would like for it to be especially like on your fruits and veggies this little guy here he came on my begonia and i guess he really really liked it and what they're doing now is introducing different types of predatory animals like ladybugs right here you know i should say predatory bugs not necessarily animals you can get the larvae to buy and you can put them in there and they help to control the population of some of these um, insects because this one actually um, killed out a few of my um, begonias before I realized what was happening so you can pick them off if you prefer that option you know as far as not getting you know the other type of you know bugs to control them you can see he's not even coming off right there he just really loves it <laughs> but I picked him off and I had to get rid of him because like I said he actually damaged really badly um, a couple of my begonia plants and aren't they a beautiful flower guys so then the next thing um, that we're going to be seeing more of is what are called no dig raised beds, meaning that you're not digging down in the ground to make the raised bed. You're just basically putting cardboard, newspaper and different things and you just put the, your soil on top of it so that way it takes less out of you. And you can see we did this here with the cinder blocks and I'll link that one as the step by step of, of how we put it together so you can see for yourself. And look at the harvest right here, guys. I put some beans and a few other things in here. And with these beans, one of the easiest things that beginners can start with is basically almost no fail, I would say. It's a good way to start your garden. And you can see the harvest right there. And every six weeks, you're getting harvest from it. So it is just, you know, the gift that keeps on giving, I would say, until the end of the growing season. And I'll link that video below for you as well. The next one is old world plants. We want to call them the OG in this case, I guess. These are peony, peonies right here, and it's really old world flowers. These are beautiful, beautiful peonies. Um, they belong to my neighbor. They're right next to where I live, so I can see them all the time when they come out in the spring, and they smell absolutely wonderful. They get used a lot as bridal flowers, and these are the flower of 2024. Over here, you'll also see like hydrangeas coming back quite a bit. This is a very, very large variety right here. These are mop head hydrangeas. And I also have a future video coming up for hydrangeas as well. There are so many types and they're absolutely gorgeous. The next thing is roses. And I think roses are just something that's always been there for us. But you'll see more like climbing type roses, more shrub type roses, you know, more delicate colors like these to give you that kind of an old world feel. So you'll see quite a bit of those. The next one would be like balcony gardens with more urbanization and people living more in the city and occupying sometimes smaller spaces, less outdoor space. You'll see that there are a lot of balcony gardens. You'll see where they're using the core, like this beautiful wreath right here that have a more natural look. And this is tending more towards a younger generation, but pretty much a lot of people are going in that general direction. You can see it's also a nice place to relax which you know is a good thing to do this is my sister's balcony she had um, petunias last season she had begonias beautiful gladiola there she had pansies and a miniature lemon tree and you, know, you also encourage um, on these balconies you know wildlife to come in like birds for example like this little one here he just kept looking through her window and she caught it and it's also good to put like hummingbird feeders out there too with the nectar and you know it's just such a wonderful place You'll also see lots of wall gardens like these right here. It may be just on a rack. It could be on the wall itself, but just different ways to do it. And you'll see a lot more container gardening because people sometimes have less space, but they want to grow fruits and veggies and herbs like this tomato right here. And you'll see smaller varieties of those two and smaller, you know, like um, berries and stuff like that. Of course, it's always going to be the most, you know, beautiful flowers that you can put in them, you know, just for beauty. But you know it's all a different part of the way that things are moving and i did this one last summer and i just absolutely loved how it came out the next category is heat tolerant plants you're going to be seeing a lot more plants you know with temperatures you know we're getting record highs in many places like this cosmos right here this is an almost no fuss plant and it's not a perennial but you know the seeds do drop and they will come back year after year and the butterflies love them 
you know the bees love them and all of that we have some cone flowers over here as well very drought tolerant plant and this will grow in most most um, climates you have to be really far north for this to not happen for you can see the bee on there having a wonderful time and just you know pollinating and i just think they're so pretty and then over here these are some pentas and I'm also going to be doing a video coming up about pollinator gardens, you know, how to get them set up. I'm going to be making one in my backyard. But this one was in my front garden. And I just thought that, you know, it was just so, so beautiful. You know, it he's doing his duty by pollinating and at the same time giving us a beautiful, you know, some eye candy right there. And of course, when we think of drought tolerant plants, we tend to think of succulents. But bear in mind that even though they are drought tolerant, especially if they're going to be outdoor succulents, that not all of them like to be in direct sunlight all the time. So be sure to take a look at the directions when you're purchasing these plants. So if you're basically, you know, if you love gardening, you love nature, you know, things that grow out food, you know, for your home and your family, be sure to hit the subscribe button and tap on the notification bell twice so you never miss an upload. The next category is tea gardens. And what is happening is that you're going to see a lot more people growing herbs that they can drink for tea. Right here I have rosemary, I have thyme, and I have, um, I have um, peppermint. And you can see how they are there that they were, you know, growing from small to how they appear just now. And with that being said, you'll see a lot of natural fertilizers being used. You know, you'll see like, you know, lots of fish fertilizer being used. You'll see people using like, you know, the water from banana skin you'll see things being used like rice water you'll see things like soybean water being used and of course people making their own um, compost tea as well even the case of keeping things more natural you see because like for me here i'm using um, hydrogen peroxide a three percent solution which is one part hydrogen peroxide to two parts water and i just put one third cup and fill it up to a cup in this case when i made them and this works as a really good um I'd say um, fungicide for my roses. I just spray them with it. And I also spray my bulbs if I'm going to be saving them over the winter so that they don't get fungus and get spoiled. And over here, I was showing you how in this video, how I use the grapefruit to keep the slugs away or at least to get rid of them very easily. The next one is dark foliage. Look at those beautiful elephant ears, guys. Aren't they absolutely wonderful? They are so tall and so big. And those darker colors are coming and you can see how they combine really well with the same lime green color too that is becoming you know like i said earlier becoming more popular as a trend that's coming up over here we have some beautiful coleus and i just love this plant absolutely wonderful you can see you know the you know the match there of the green with the dark color and over here you also have some moses basket and these are also good spiller plants as well too for your container gardens you can see the flower there so they also give you beautiful flowers not very large but they're so pretty you hardly even need that very very nice you know for more three dimension in those container gardens i just absolutely love it and sometimes they'll come back too and this one here is inch plant or zebrina as it's called you can also see the dark colors there and the younger the younger leaves tend to come out and have a more darker color and it gets a little lighter as they go by very very beautiful plant so nice and healthy looking and great for beds or pots the next category is that you're going to be seeing more natural decor inside the homes so like these plant stands right here they almost give you a retro look but of course it can be dressed up as modern as well depending on what you're doing so you'll see like bamboo you'll see like different type of wood type of you know um things being used ceramics you know for pots whether indoors or outdoors you know as long as they're sturdy you can always put them you know out you know out in your flower beds and they'll be perfectly fine you'll see nice hanging pots as well some of them like i said have a more of a retro look or a more modern clean look for you if that's what you're going for and i think they're so so gorgeous You'll also see like a lot of wood being used like for bird feeders more you know typically you'd see like them being painted different colors they're tending now to be more of a natural color but of course if you prefer you can always go in and change a color if you like and there's also some metal ones as well too a scruel picnic table now i have seen it all and now last but not least at number 14 would be hydroponics for hydroponics i absolutely love it the lead pot company sent me this one right here and i'm telling you guys these plants they grow so so quickly 
you reap your harvest very, very quickly. I planted basil, I planted oregano, and I also planted um, cilantro. You can see how they were coming up here. And of course, there are many different things you can use it for. You can use it like for, um, you know, like smaller variety of tomatoes. You can use it for a smaller variety of peppers. And you, if you want, you can even grow flowers in there if you like as well too. So I absolutely love it and I highly recommend it. And some of these products will be linked in the description box below under the title line. So be sure to check those out. All you have to do is make sure that you put enough of the plant food in there. And that is sold with the set or you can buy it separately. Once they're properly watered, you know, and the level doesn't go below the minimum, you're all set to go. And, you know, other plants really do benefit from being next to it because like my orchid right here, I've had this now for seven weeks. I have not lost not one bloom and a second flower stalk is coming out there. If you can see it, see how beautiful and green and lush it looks. So if lighting is a problem inside your area, you can always get grow lights and put those in. And I will link those in the description box for you below so you can get those if you would like to. So just as an overview, things are being more biophilic these days, which basically means that the house designs, you know, houses, apartments, and all of that, they're trying to be, make it so you can look out and see more of nature outside your office buildings. You'll see that happening there as well, too. And I just absolutely love it. You know, those wonderful large windows, you know, you can always close them for privacy if you'd like to do that. You know, you have wonderful indoor plants that are coming up, you know, to help to just beautify the area and your space to give you that whole biophilic feeling. You know, we're seeing lots of pollinator gardens out there and you can get like packets of those, you know, the seeds at the dollar store. So you know, it doesn't even have to cost you anything much, honestly. And so we just try to keep it eco-friendly, you know, for the trends that are going ahead. And I really hope this was helpful to you in planning your garden, you know, for the growing season and the years ahead. I want to thank you so much for watching and I do hope to see you in the next video. Take care.